All right, so uh, we're back uh, with another uh, web demo. We're going to try and um, do some uh, data collection with my dog today, Pepper. My son Owen is here to help. Um, so, you know, the Strideway is a uh, very versatile type of product, so it can be used for human gait, uh, it can be used for animal gait as well. So, uh, we're going to try and demonstrate some of that today and provide some treats for our dog. Uh, she's a very high energy order jack. Uh, so she, uh, we'll see how well she cooperates. So. Okay, you ready? Okay. So let's just let me get this started over here. And we're gonna start over at this end over here, Owen. Owen. Walk around again. Walk, walk around again. Mm -hmm. Heavy. And then try to just make sure she sees the black meat and walk beside her. That's it. Keep going. That's it. There you go. Try to keep her going around. One more time. All right, one more time. Okay, take her away there. And then she will pitch it up after. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we're now going to take a look at um, the data that we collected with Pepper. And uh, so first screen that we're seeing here is essentially the, uh, the walkway here. And we've got our video that we were collecting at the same time. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and play this forward and we can see in the video walking. So synchronized video, we're seeing the foot strikes now come up, up here and uh, you'll notice green boxes and that uh, is depicting the left front. The blue is the left hind, the red is the right front and the purple is the right hind foot. So um, the software will do its best to automatically describe which, which is which. And if it can't figure one out, it marks it as an NA, and then we can go back and, and correct them. So uh, if I just go back, I'll put this into peak mode, go back to the fourth pass. And uh, so just to give you an idea, um, so we've this has been depicted as a left front. So if you were to le uh, just kind of right click this, you can then see that you can, if, if it's not correct based on what you see in the video, then you can go through and select um, uh, or correct the, uh, the the mistake, I guess, that the um, the software might have made. Again, the software is, uh, uh, can, you, you almost, if, if, you, if it doesn't know what um, first uh, foot or paw strike happens, then it's taking a guess at, um, at, uh, at identifying the foot strike. So it's always good to have the video synchronization in there as well, so you can see uh, which foot is hit striking the mat, and then you can identify it, and then the um, AI of the uh, software will go ahead and, and uh, plot the rest of them. So that just to give you an idea how you can change that. Um, and then, uh, of course, we've got our video on this side here um, that you can, uh, you can go through now. We've done multiple passes, but um, I'm just going to close this and get into the data. Um, what I've done is essentially just edited the video into one pass that I really wanted to focus in on. Um, as you know, if you have used uh, things like this with animals, it does take a bit of a uh, habituation period, if you will, where the you know you have to pass the dog a number of times uh, or the cat or whatever whatever animal you might be using just to uh, get them used to walking there um, and, and getting some good data that way. Um, so now, if we just uh, go and place this into peak mode, we'll be able to see the foot strikes. I'm going to take the video away for now because we've already identified everything. So to get the um, the strike boxes placed, we're just going to use the, the quadruped box up here, and we'll say yes to create in those boxes. And as you can see, it creates those boxes there, and then it gives us our tables. And you'll see three tables here: a gait table, a, st a stance stride table, and then a symmetry table. And um, in this case here, we're seeing uh, the number of stance phases. <coughs> excuse me, is 13. Uh, our gate time uh, is about 1.57 uh, seconds, and uh, the distance covered was uh, almost two meters in this case here. 
and then so we'll have a calculation of gate velocity and our gate cycle time uh, as well as cycles per minute so you get a bit of information there that you can go with uh, depending on what you're looking at uh, if you're looking at an injured dog or a dog that's in recovery um, um, and you're doing some rehab and so forth you can kind of track some changes with regards to that um, we can also look at the step stance uh, sorry the stance stride table and here obviously you'll see the left foot the left hind foot the right uh, front foot and then the right hind foot and we'll be able to look at the data that you get there in terms of how long these for the first one stance time how long that that paw is actually in contact with the ground and you can do some direct comparisons to the right foot. Uh, is the left front and the right front, are they um, fairly symmetrical? Are they the same? Um, and then you look at the left hind foot and the right hind foot and kind of identify if there are any differences or any significant differences there. <clears throat> um, Pepper's relatively a healthy dog. There are no injuries with her. So I would be surprised to see too much, too much of a difference, but some of these differences that we're seeing here, and even when you looked at the video, you could see she's a bit of a hyperactive dog. So um, obviously I was enticing her with treats. So the head would turn and things like that. And you might have even noticed that she was pulling my son um, with a leash. So she was trying to get somewhere a little bit quicker. So that could explain some of the differences you're seeing here. So again, some uh, training uh, is probably a good thing to do with some of these, uh, if you have a hyper, a little bit of a hyperactive dog. Um, so then you can also get swing time information, uh, stride time, and again, looking at you know, left front, right right front, and trying to determine if there's big differences or not. We can get down to the stride acceleration, um, maximum force, percentage of body weight. So if you know the weight of the dog and you place that into the patient information, if I just open this up, we go into patient information here. If you put the body weight there, so I don't know how, how much she weighs, but... You can just put in, uh, say she's 10 kilos. You should see a change occur. So now you can see we get actually a percentage of the body. Uh, the for maximum force is a percentage of the body weight. So that will fill that uh, box up. And we've got our maximum force. So you can see that the, le the left front is producing a little bit more force than the right front. And again, that could be just her pulling in one direction and generating a little bit more force of that front foot. Um, so then we can go and take this information and just look at that as um, a, a symmetry index. So essentially uh, comparing the front to hind uh, and getting a, a value that would uh, depict some sort of uh, symmetry where one would be identical and um, uh, if it's above one, then that means there's more for or there's more time in the front versus the the, the hind, uh, and so forth. So uh, typically, uh, I think uh, in, in, within within um, uh, with dogs, if we look at even just a weight uh, distribution, um, I believe their front foots are uh, their front uh, legs uh, accommodate maybe one point two. Uh, well. Uh, I think the difference is there's there's more weight in the front than there is in the back, uh, the more force. So you're going to see um, a higher number, a higher number than one typically for a healthy dog, um, on uh, for for that um, max force front to hind uh, ratio. Um, but when you do see a red uh, indicator like this, that that does indicate that there's probably a difference that's a little bit more than what would be expected um, for a quadruped, and uh, so that'd be something that maybe. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just indicating that within um, it's not within the range that was expected. It's something that you can go and uh, look at a little bit more into, <clears throat> depending on what the uh, on what uh, uh, your your uh, what your animal what issues your animal might have or what you're working on with the animal. So again, a lot of the same uh, things that we looked at here, but you're um, looking at stance time, stride length, uh, front to hind. And then we're going into left-right comparisons here. So one again is perfectly symmetrical left-right, and then anything uh, above one would be more on the left side, and anything below one would be more on the right side. Um, and then we are, we're looking at stance time left front to right front. So you're doing a direct comparison uh, of the uh, the uh, the front uh, legs 
and then a direct in comparison left right of the uh, hind legs. So it gives you uh, some symmetry information that you can look at rather quickly to uh, determine where the uh, where there might be an asymmetry and uh, determine uh, why that might be. Uh, another thing I wanted to show was just how to graph these strikes and look at the force information. Um, so we just did a left, I just did a right click here and I graph the strikes and you can see green is our left front, uh, red is our right front, uh, blue is our left hind, and purple is our right hind. So you're seeing those curves generated here um, and I mean we can see that they're fairly similar each one. Again we're seeing some changes in some of these curves and I, I will attribute those to the pulling effect <coughs> of Pepper uh, with my son trying to get to the treat at the end of the, the strideway but um, so generally what you're doing when you're looking at this is trying to get as many um, foot strikes that are uh, similar uh, to, as possible. Um, obviously if you uh, have a uh, an animal that has got a pathology of some sort, you might see um, some differences, but you should still see a similar pattern within those differences. Um, another way to look at this, obviously, uh, as we saw with some of the human gait, is rather than looking at each individual step, we can put this into an average mode. Let's do that. Got a little button up here, and this will give us um, our left front left hind foot, left uh, right front, right hind foot in terms of our pressure distribution near each paw, but then you'll also get your curves here. So you've got our right hind, which is in purple, and then our left hind, which is in blue. And now you can do a direct comparison on the average um, of those strikes that were selected, and then see what kind of differences. And in this case, we can see that the, um, the left hind foot is on the ground a little bit longer than the right. So we can see similar force generation and similar loading rate of that force, but then um, in terms of how long it takes for that foot to come off the ground, the left side seems to stay on, in contact with the ground a little bit longer than the right. And then we can look at the same on the right, on the, um, the front uh, feet as well. Uh, so green is our, left, is our left side and red is our right. And you can see similar again, loading of the force similar peaks of the forest, a little bit different, but then we can see that the right side is just on the ground a little bit longer than, um, than, the, than the, uh, the left. So again, Pepper is not, there's, there's nothing wrong with her. Uh, she um, <clears throat> uh, is a very healthy dog, uh, but I think maybe just on that pass, we're seeing some of these differences because of that pulling effect again that she, uh, that we could see in the video. So, um, yeah, that's, that kind of covers um, a little bit of what I wanted to go over today. Um, I guess if uh, there's anything, I hope it, you, you guys found it informative, first of all, and then if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be happy to uh, try and answer them. And if you have any ideas or anything that you want to see specific um, with Animal Gate, uh, then we can uh, definitely, if you want to pass us a note and let us know what you're thinking, and we can see if we can put together a uh, a demo for that to try and help answer any questions you have with that. Thanks a lot for your attention and we'll talk to you soon.